Welcome, Ben Runner. Hello everybody, it's Kieran A.K. The Laird here and I'm back with another hardware review but one that's going to be a little bit different to my usual ones so please let me know what you think of it because I'll be interested to hear your views and this week I'm going to be looking at the highly rare and sought after Sam Coupe. Now for many years there have been talk of a so called super spectrum in the press. It finally seemed to be coming true when the Loki project was announced only for the takeover of Sinclair by Amstrad to follow through and leave it on the scrap heap. Amstro saw the Spectrum as a budget offering in their range and had no ambitions to extend its life, preferring to plough forward with their own CPC Plus project. This left the door open for somebody else to come in and have a go themselves. That somebody else ended up being Miles Gordon Technology. MGT was already well known in the ZX Spectrum world for their many different hardware add-ons and peripherals, so seemed to be the perfect people to pick up the baton and run with it. Unfortunately, MGT greatly underestimated the work involved in bringing such a machine to market, and the machine that would become the Sam Coupe was beset with problems from day one. Many people wonder where the Sam name comes from. Well, there are actually three versions of this story. During the design phase, the computer was nicknamed Some Amazing Machine, Some Amazing Micro, or Spectrum Advanced Machine, depending on who you speak to. For me, the latter sounds the most likely. The coupe part came about because the machine resembles a fastback car in profile, with the blue feet as the wheels. Numerous delays due to problems they had with both the hardware and the operating system meant the Sam didn't see a release until the end of 1989, and then only in very small numbers. So it failed to take advantage of the lucrative Christmas period. By the time it made it out onto the market proper, the 16-bit Atari ST and Amiga already had a strong foothold, and MGT lacked the financial power to promote it properly. It didn't help that the SAM only offered compatibility with 48K Spectrums, and not the more recent 128K machines that had now become the standard. Without sufficient sales, the software companies just weren't willing to support it with games, and only a few titles trickled out. Although the ZX Spectrum magazines at the time were pretty excited about the computer and covered it in depth, this enthusiasm failed to transfer into sales, and less than a year after launch, MGT found themselves in receivership. After MGT went bankrupt, founders Alan Miles and Bruce Gordon set up a new company called Samco to continue producing SAMs, and Bruce started a separate venture, Samtech, to continue producing hardware. Samco struggled on for two years and then went into liquidation themselves, with Samtech following shortly after. West Coast Computers soon appeared as a saviour, with grand plans to resurrect and improve the SAM, but after a clearance of inventory, they went quiet themselves and the computer was officially dead. Only 12,000 SAMs were sold in total worldwide, and because of these small numbers, it's now become highly collectible and very expensive to purchase, with auctions sometimes going into four figures. Due to its cult-like status, the SAM gets some support from the community with new games and hardware projects. It's also worth adding that in 2017, the Sam Coupe name, logo, and all associated IP, including Mel Croucher's brilliant Sam the Robot, was purchased by Paul Andrews and his company Andrews UK Limited. This means that the legacy of the computer is now in the very best of hands, and it could return once again if Paul's track record is anything to go by. So we've covered the uh, history of the Sam Coupe computer and now we are going to look at the, the machine itself and uh, first of all I must give special thanks to the Retro Computer Museum in Leicester because that's where I am filming this at the moment and they've kindly given me access to all their, their rare computers and machines and technology and uh, they're a really worthy cause that I suggest everyone should go and support and I will stick a link to the Retro Computer Museum in, uh, in Leicester in the, the links to this video in the description. And uh, if you do have a fair few, fair, uh, a few spare pounds floating around, then um, please go and donate some to this great cause. 
so they can keep collecting great machines like this and uh, keeping them alive for, for everyone else to enjoy. So here is the, the legendary Sam Coupe, the so-called Super Spectrum. Now straight away, um, you'll notice it, it's an incredibly striking looking computer. It doesn't really look quite like anything else out there. The, the raised keyboard is, is, I think, probably its most distinctive feature. So you can see straight away that, um, you know, this is almost like a, a precursor to, to modern PCs where they had would have the keyboards with the, you know, the things you can adjust to adjust the height of the keyboards. This already had the tilted keyboard kind of built into it and that makes it incredibly um, nice to type on. And the keyboard, quite clacky, um, nice keyboard. Um, I, I really, really like the keyboard and the sound. Um, perhaps the keys are, the plastic on the keys are a little cheap, um, but it does have quite a nice feel to it. Uh, another distinctive feature that you probably already saw are these um, feet on the sides, um, which means it raises it slightly off the surface it's sitting on as well, um, because there are there are cooling vents on the bottom, as you can see. And uh, it's worth noting here, while I'm on the, the bottom of the machine actually as well, that this is an original um, MGT Sam Coupe. So there we've got the Miles Gordon Technology sticker on it. Um, I don't know if we can read the serial number. Um, I don't really know what that means because it's quite a long number, so I don't know how early in the production run it was. But there we go. It's an original MGT Sam Coupe. Uh, it's in pretty good condition. The, the logo's a little faded, but it is good. <laughs> So here's the other, obviously another distinctive feature of the SAM was the built-in disk drives and the fact that they, though they are built-in disk drives, um, they could be removed. So here we go. Um, if you needed to replace them or whatever, that just comes out like that. And if you wanted more than one disk drive, you just took that off and another disk drive can go in there, um, which is fantastic. So you could have built-in dual floppies um, in, in what is you know, actually a quite compact case design. I mean, it's it's much smaller than say something like an ST or Amiga, which were obviously the machines that it was it was trying to compete with. So on the back, let's have a look around there. Uh, nothing on that side. So around the back, we have our, um, our various ports for monitors, for expansion, for SCAR, headphone socket, on off switch. Um, and strangely, only one joystick port. I'm not really sure what the decision was there to only put uh, one joystick port on the SAM. I believe that's a Kempston uh, compatible joystick port, if I remember correctly. So um, I don't think they were massively thinking of games when they did that, because obviously if you wanted two players, you'd have to have one on the joystick, one on the keyboard. But how many two-player games there is on the SAM? I believe there is some. I think there's stuff like a Bomberman ripoff and stuff like that. And um, yeah. That, I mean that that's that's pretty much all there is to show um, with the machine really. Um, the vents along the back as well. You can see there's some sticker there. I'm not sure where that's come from. I mean there's nothing on the other side either. There is there is nothing on the other side of the machine, but it's a big old um, chunky in a way uh, computer because it's it's quite high uh, because of the the fact it has these built-in disk drives and that the keyboard is raised, but it's definitely a great looking machine. It's probably one of my favorite um, 8-bit computers to look at. In fact, one of my favorite home computers full stop to look at. And uh, something that I would love to have in my collection, but because they go for, for such huge amounts of money on eBay, um, I don't think that's something that's ever gonna happen unless I strike it really lucky with a local pickup or something. But but there we go, that's, that's, the, that's the MGT Sam Coupe.
So there we have it, the Sam Coupe, the computer that promised so much and was never really given a chance to prove it. The question over whether you should own one totally depends on how big your wallet is. As lovely as the Sam is, they don't come cheap and so remain out of reach for most collectors. There's also a distinct lack of games and software, meaning this definitely isn't a machine for the casual collector either. That said, I'm sure that I'm not alone in lusting after a Sam Coupe. Hmm, you know you want one. But before I go, I must also thank all my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. So special thanks to Funder Fundington, John DiLiberto, Keith, Carl Olsen, Larry Anderson, Mark Slorence, Mr Caboto, Psycho Lavos, Cold Art Fusion and Scott Maguire. If you want to do the same thing, then go check out my Patreon right now and get access to a host of extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird and I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.